how close you are to all those interactive between surface and, and line stuff. And they may, they're going to drill underground. They're not coming over the ground with the line. But they're going under this 50 feet down. And I've looked at their drilling. And I've looked at my own drilling because I've worked a lot across the field. The chickens are messing around with their, uh, their well. They may be in limestone, and they get limestone, but then these features right here, which is a bunch of them, they're sand shoots, they're clay shoots, you know that. And when they hit them, all well drillers, they, they dread this part of drilling. Because the first 50, 60 feet, they need to set surface casing because everything's caving in. And yet they're going to drill a hole 36 inches in diameter, 60 feet underground up there, so underneath the Swanee River, 2,500 feet long, and not set any surface casing, hoping that hole stays open. Get to the other side, grab that pipe, pull it all the way back, weld it as they go, and pull it back up to the other side. And that, and they'll be pumping in order to hold that hole open. They got to pump. I, I can't even imagine how many the circulation, the mud that they got to keep flowing through there, and it's got to be enough pressure to hold that hole open. Anytime they hit a conduit. It's just going to blow into it, and, and chances are it's going to open these up at the surface. They're going to fall on the on their drill bit, but they're going to get stuck. And I'm not saying they can't solve it, because you can solve anything. When you look at things, the only thing that would have stopped them if somebody said, "Hey, you got a volcano in the way, and it's going to melt your pipe." You know, other than that, they'll figure it out. But the best thing they doing it is really, in my opinion. So, what would you call this feature? It's, it's simple. Right. Okay. And then why why is this? Because that one's plugged a little bit. And, and, and the difference is it may have some more clay in it and this one doesn't. <coughs> this one popped open and that one didn't have. That doesn't have pressure coming up with water doing that, does it? Not if that one's okay. But this one, but, but you're right, what happens a lot of times is you got you got a limestone on the surface and you got to on top of it. And there's water in your aquifer and pushing up against that clay and it pulls down draw your water levels down, then it opens the water, gives room for that shape of glass. So that happens a lot when you have a sinkhole in the area. But here, it would be the situation with that one. That's just going to play plug and jump and hold it. So, so what, Dennis, just so everybody, would you, how would you classify the sinkhole? Active, cold, combo, depression, what, how would you? Well, I would have to say it's active in the sense that it's, got these open conduits, but it's fairly stable because the trees are all around it. And so you can't say this thing is falling in like some of the other ones you can walk up there, but this has just got an open conduit. When they go underground, they're going to be pushing, they'll be losing that circulation too in all these conduits. And uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a challenge. To the, I can't even imagine the size of the equipment they're going to have up there to put that big of a, a hole underneath there. And that's kind of their business. It's, our business is, you know, I don't think they're going to be able to do this without this whole thing. We start popping up in the sinkholes all along the route. So it's through and through. Yeah. 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 All right, well, let's, let's continue on. Uh,